gifted this 40-foot sailing sloop. This is our third time hauling out an almost free sailboat, and this has been the hardest of the hards. Robbie is finally returning to the boatyard from being away. How did it go? I don't know. I left one bag, I came back with two, I don't know how. We've miraculously received the new propeller. Some items we've ordered online just never made it through customs. Look, there's so many ticks down here this morning. Wait, I knew it wasn't going to fit because we had to get one size too small. Our shaft is millimeters. All of these Propellers are sold in denominations of inches, and we had to get one that's a little bit smaller, one inch, versus propellers that were for sale that were like one inch and a quarter, which then would slide up, it would be too big. So we had to bring it to the busy machine shop to bore the hole out larger, which they unexpectedly and delightfully had time to finish. Robbie made me a long sanding board to start fairing the hull. However, I found that simply sanding with the grinder worked best to break down some of that thicker stuff first, and then later on, the longboard would come in handy. Just when I thought I was getting somewhere with this bottom project. What you doing, Justine? Robbie came along and requested that we hammer out all those little micro blisters near the waterline. They're everywhere on the waterline. Yeah, and they're uh, mostly on this section. If you paint and then the flakes pop out, we're left with all these like little, little things in the middle. But is she doing it because she can't get up there or is she doing it because she wants to stay away from the ticks? A little B. A little B. I have to emphasize that these damn things added another week or two through the repairs. And this side with the sunshine is a little bit more visible. There'd be no point in painting though if we didn't deal with it now. Even the queue is doing the same thing. <laughs> this had been an entirely holy process. We removed a bunch of holes from the boat, and now we were poking a whole lot more, including in the iron lead-filled keel. The plan was to whack it until rust stopped dropping off. Without access to more sophisticated tools, there would be a whole lot of whacking going on. There. I don't know. I guess this is the shallow. This section that's hollow is full of water. Yeah, that's quite a bit of water, hey? Yep. Why is our key hollow? Pooh! Super salty. Ugh. Pooh! Isn't it ballast or sweet, sweet ballast that we need to keep? Nope. Oh, it's like bubbling. Something like ultra corrosive. Yeah, it looks like it's bubbling. Is it salt water? I'm The sides of the keel would be straightforward enough to deal with, however the bottom side was going to be an extra challenge to repair for sure. We would need to fill the holes in, so we would need better access to the area. Surprise! We're going to take down the mast. Just because we have a good deal to be able to take it down, here we go. First step would be to prepare the stands to lay down our mast. And then the next was to help our neighbor remove his mast first. This would be a great warm up to then move on to our higher and heavier mast. 
This all took only about 20 minutes, but it was definitely a good thing to have all those extra helping hands in order to make it run smoothly. The crane just barely reached above our second spreaders. Robbie would need to go up and to wrap the harness around the mast to hook it onto the crane. Again, we were happy to have that extra help. Where did the guy go? I want to ask him if you can uh, just put a little bit of pressure on. With the crane operator just slightly holding up the mast, it was just a matter of loosening and removing all the stays. Our mast is deck stepped and it was perfectly balanced because Robbie knows exactly where to place the harness just above the spreaders so that the mast didn't make a pop or a fuss. It just floated off. The most complicated part was to guide the mast down onto the workbenches exactly where we wanted it. This is definitely the biggest and heaviest mast we've had to deal with yet. This is being removed, we put a new antenna, we're gonna see about the light. Mostly we're just gonna be going for the oxidation. And now that we can work, we're going to re-tap these. We can put the proper spreader covers instead of these shitty wires. Getting ready for the sanding and washing of the mast. The reason why we took down the mast in the first place was to check out what we suspected to be a crack in the step which was decidedly worse than we originally thought. The most useful tool I had on the board was a freaking axe. So the main reason we took this is because there's a crack from here all the way basically to there. It was almost even till there. Five inches. It's five by three. Is that in mills? In mills it would be almost 10 now. We were cleaning the mass and suddenly this thing exploded, I know, in the sun and tons of white powder came out and well, I'm 99% sure it's chalk. It feels like chalk. You should not be playing with that with your bare hands. Oh my god, what a what a thing. I wonder what the f*** it is. Why would a radar reflector be full of... I wonder if this is the same. <coughs> <coughs> I'm just gonna whack it off. What the f is it? What is that? <laughs> That's not funny. <laughs> it's hilarious. It's not funny. <sighs> could be like an could be like a metal oxide. That's horrible. Don't breathe it. Don't play with it. I'm used to being doused with white powders all day in the boatyard, but I'm also serious about knowing what those white powders are. We determined that whatever it was, it was non-soluble in water. We continued removing all the components that we could. We would be doing a very light sanding, mostly in the spots where there was visible corrosion. And we would be doing a little light painting to extend the life of our mighty spar. Time to unload some more substances off this vessel. The years old diesel rotting in our built-in tank. Yeah. We're gonna be doing a lot of sucking now. And hopefully I don't Get a mouthful of diesel. <laughs> Having drunk enough diesel and the siphon not working properly, he finally found a hand pump in the yard. It's a masturbation pump. And we filled up at least 200 liters of diesel to be donated to the yard for polishing. 
because we don't have the ability to clean our fuel right now. We tried experimenting using welds to fill the holes in our keel. How's the welding going? Oh, not too well. Oh. Legs sleep. This is like the best case scenario welding. You're gonna have to weld upside down maybe later. So we were lent by our neighbor this nice little, this cute, cute little tiny welder, a mask, or helmet, whatever you call it, some gloves. And I attempted to fix our rudder by bludgeoning it, much like I've hammered and whacked everything else around here. There was moisture under the outer layers, of course. This is all wet, of course. Tons of water under the bondo. The welder needed more power. It wasn't getting hot enough, probably. But we weren't prepared to buy a bigger power cord to make that happen. Grinding off the, the welding that wasn't so successful. We would need to prep the rusty keel surface. So we're just going to use epoxy in the end to fill in the holes. Robbie is most familiar with OSFO from working on his family's steel boats. Simply spray the green stuff on, leave it for an hour or so, rinse, and then repeat the process twice. I whacked and sanded much of the bondo off of the rudder opened it up where the water seemed to be seeping out, and treated the stainless with the metal cleaning spray as well. I suspected that the rudder might be filled with salt water, so it wouldn't hurt to open it up and to let it drain from two holes at the bottom. Although no water came rushing out, the rudder became noticeably lighter later on. Meanwhile, although we had opened all sorts of cans of worms with the rudder and the keel, the hull had become smooth enough to think about painting on that protective epoxy primer. We taped off to where the previous primer layer had been applied, although our waterline presently was probably several inches lower, after removing so much weight from the interior. The time has finally come, the time going, has come. to cover up all the nasty work. <laughs> to hide all the imperfections. Looking at the instructions, because we it's, haven't used this before. It's mixing issue one to one, part one based, part two catalyst. I use small cream yogurt container, whatever fills the cup. Get this cup pretty filled. Well, we thought we were going to paint right now. But it's a little more complicated. The rains had finally arrived, just in time for the painting season. Classic. And the other issue, I don't know if we got screwed with all paint or... The very expensive and complicated to import Seahawk epoxy primer must have been sitting on the shelf too long with all that sediment stuck on the bottom because it took several machine shaking sessions at the paint shop and hours of mixing with the drill to finally render the parts usable. It's stuck on the bottom. Bottom feels like concrete, I don't know how to say it. It feels like a sticky thing and instead of dissolving as soon as it touches again at the bottom, it likes to like... He was trying to describe a non-Newtonian fluid, I think. I think it's the silicate they put inside that's like... But finally, after an excessive amount of time, we were nearing the big moment. Yeah, of course, it looks nicely mixed. After I mix it for three hours, and then the guy mixed it for like... Mmm, yummy, mmm. Mmm, I want to eat it. Scary, yeah. yeah. Someone call a pathologist or gynecologist, which is more awkward. We got one cup. Everybody keep track. We got one cup. Very funny. Robbie mixed two and two cream cups to make one very large and one very quickly kicking batch of two-part primer. With the rain starting again, we decided to quickly cover just the keel to seal up the newly cleaned metal surface that would rust again within hours if we didn't paint right away. The pie doesn't drip. As described on the can, the paint is very high build, and by the end of the session, we were really just globbing mounds of it on. 
What did we discover about mixing this paint? What we discovered? It gives you arthritis on the hands. Are you going to add something to this paint? Yep, we'll add some thinner. It's too thick. It's way too thick. Knowing that more Seahawk brand specific products would take weeks to get to us, we looked at the product data sheet and then stopped by the local paint store to find the closest mixture of chemicals resembling the proper thinner. The universal thinner at the paint shop gave us a nice, smooth, more workable mixture. With two gallon kits, we had enough primer to generously apply more than two layers. It was just a matter of getting these rock hard cans mixed. Join us next time as we tackle the Pandora boxes of other boat projects to do here in the hard. Yeah, I think it's been ready.